lot of people find that wedding planning is a total drag, utterly overwhelming, or full of drama. And that's super fair. Weddings are often full of expectations, and you've probably never done this before. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be a drag. In fact, it should be fun. In this video, I'm gonna break down how to actually have fun while planning a wedding, and also then how to actually plan one. So <laughs> I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. I do have a free wedding planning timeline linked in the description below if you're interested. It also comes with a wedding party mini guide, which you might find helpful. It's all linked in the description below it should help you keep on track. I'm getting ahead of myself. My name is Katie Sauter. If you subscribe, you'll become a Sauter Otter. And oh, by, by the way, I'm a wedding planner. I also have an engineering day job, 9 to 5, that we, we just talk about here. So what are some of the key ways that to actually have fun while planning a wedding? All right, first you want to break it down. There's a lot of things that go into the planning process. If you divide everything up into tasks and you set deadlines for each task, making sure to not procrastinate any of them, it's going to make it's so much less stressful. And as you're breaking it down, make sure that you also schedule in some time to celebrate some of the milestones. Like, did you just book a caterer? Go out for a date, treat yourself. Cause it can be a lot and it can be really stressful. Just turn it into a fun thing where you, you accomplish it, you go menu tasting. It's a date now or, you have all these faux flowers that you need to assemble um, like a month or two in advance. Just get a party going with your friends and you make the bouquets together. Definitely do not procrastinate. I know that's really hard for a lot of people, but it's going to be your best bet at actually enjoying yourself. Next one, I kind of already alluded to this, but date nights. Date nights are like just one of the best ways to enjoy the whole process. Visiting a venue can be a date. You. Go visit the venue, then you maybe maybe you go out to your favorite brewery afterwards. Or maybe you're like, oh, we have a bakery that we really love. We just went to this venue. Let's go check out this bakery. Or let's just go out for some mini golf afterwards. Like, discuss it. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. You could also be like, you know, we do need to brainstorm themes and ideas. Why don't we just do that at our favorite coffee shop? Another important one, and I've already alluded to this, is to delegate and share. Do not carry the entire burden on your own. You don't have to. Um, delegating tasks is so important, especially when you're a busy person and say you can't afford a planner, then being able to delegate some of these tasks is going to be super helpful. If your fiance isn't super interested in wedding planning, just give them tasks to do instead. So ask your fiance, Hey, I really need your help. Can you research rehearsal dinner locations for us? Can can I put you in charge of making the reservations for the next day brunch? Things like that. Um, specific tasks really help. You could also ask them to be in charge of uploading RSVP responses to your wedding website. So it could be little tasks like that, but that adds up to a lot of time on your part. For decision fatigue, for this kind of delegating and sharing, uh, one thing you can do with your fiance would just be like, okay, they really don't care. How about I give them three to four options, no more than four options and say, which one do you like best? And have them narrow it down to at least two, which will help with your decision fatigue for sure. But most importantly, make it very clear to your fiance that you need help. Just be like, hey, I can't do it without you really need your help with this. Can you take on this task and I'll be doing this other thing? Stuff like that it really helps. You can also involve friends or a wedding planner to get involved and just help you with some of the tasks. And if there's any drama, just consider keeping all of the planning aspects to yourself and the people who are actually like positive and supporting you. Um, doesn't mean you have to boot anyone out of your life. Just, just keep on trucking along. Just don't share. That's all. Um, do they need to know if they're going to have opinions you don't like? I've already kind of mentioned this one, but just, you know, make sure you celebrate each step as you go along. Pop some fizz, you know, go out to your favorite bakery, bake some brownies, make it cute, some banana pancakes, dance to some banana pancakes by Jack Johnson. I don't know. It's good. It's fun. But remind yourself why you're getting married. You're obviously in love. This is your person. Focus on the love and excitement more than the stress that might you might be feeling. Just take a deep breath and you're gonna get through it. It's one day. It's, it's supposed to be an amazing day. But just keep in mind that 
the end result is really what this is all about. So how do we actually plan a wedding? Step one, decide on your priorities first. Sit down together to do this part. Which parts do you really want to spend your budget on? So is it your DJ, your dress, your cake? Is it your catering, the venue? Do you really want everyone on the dance floor bopping around? You need to be able to figure out exactly the kind of vibe that you're hoping to achieve. Do you just want good food and you really don't care about dancing? Do that. Remember that you don't have to do a bouquet toss. You don't have to do any of the traditional things. You could be like, we're gonna do pre-ceremony tequila shots, which super cool, please do. I want to be invited to that. <laughs> Once you have your priorities, you can set your budget. That's number two. I guess that's four, huh? Anyway, you'll wanna allocate funds for each aspect of the wedding. Always allocate 10% of your budget to wiggle room and extraneous small details and little things like that. Allocating funds should include venue, catering, DJ, dress and suits, your shoes, your accessories. So that all just gets clogged into attire. It should also include your officiant. It can include stationery, your signage, your your thank you cards afterwards. I generally wouldn't lump in your honeymoon into that or your wedding bands. I always kind of consider those as more of like, those are other expenses. Your wedding bands, yeah, sure. That has to be part of the wedding. By the way, you aren't limited to doing wedding bands. So if you get a unique ring, like I, I have a unique ring, um, this does not come with a wedding band. So I'm just not gonna have a wedding band for my own wedding. So you don't you don't have to have a wedding band if, if your engagement ring doesn't allow it. However, I personally don't budget the wedding band in partially because I just feel like it's a gift. Now you can choose to add in gifts for your budget. So some things you want to include in your budget would be your venue, a wedding planner or coordinator. I highly recommend getting a coordinator at a minimum just to make your day so much smoother. They are unsung heroes. I am not even that biased on that. I mean, I am one, I guess, but anyway. Also your alcohol, drinks, that even if you're not doing an alcoholic one, you still need to factor in mocktails or juice or soda or whatever it is you're going to have. Rentals, so that can include your tent, your heaters, your fans. It could include uh, chairs, tables, tableware, utensils, napkins, uh, linens. Uh, it Rentals include a lot of things. Photography, videography, if you want a content creator or not, florals, decor, music, or DJ, or musicians, if you want a harpist, maybe you should budget that in. Stationery, signage, apparel, hair and makeup artist. Uh, and then always, always have wiggle room of about 10%. That will save you a lot on your budget if you put in 10% on your wiggle room. Also, your efficient and transportation, also some things to think about. Don't forget to get your marriage license to factor that into your budget as well. Uh, at least in the state of North Carolina, it's 60 bucks, at least where I am. And then uh, wedding insurance, I highly recommend definitely get wedding insurance. It's about, it's, it's almost a dollar, I guess. It's not that bad. And insures you if you like, if there's a hurricane or fire that comes through and now you have to get a new wedding. So after you set your budget, create a guest list. Decide on the number you'd like to invite. Just remember that each guest adds to the overall cost. Expect about 100 to $125 per guest. Remember that if you wouldn't spend $100 on someone for their dinner, you probably shouldn't be inviting them to your wedding. So don't feel too pressured to invite everyone. You do not have to. I give you permission. You do not have to invite your your long lost cousin. You don't even have to invite kids if you don't want to. Next, consider a wedding date. So I would like to mention that you should just give a range generally, unless you have a very specific date in mind. You'll want to consider things like weather, availability of venue, personal significance like anniversary or season. Just remember to keep like natural disasters in mind that if they happen frequently during certain parts of the year, like if you're in Florida and you're planning like an August or like an August or September wedding, definitely get insurance. You just don't know when a hurricane's gonna come along. Once you have all of those things, you'll be able to select a venue, knowing your vibe, your guest count, your cost, your budget, blah, blah, blah. You'll want to explore a bunch of different options for this. Generally, the Knot, Wedding Wire, and Zola, especially Zola, I'm, I'm a fan of Zola because they are not, I don't know, I have feelings about the Knot. I'll get into that in a moment. The Knot, Wedding Wire, and Zola are some of the best places to look for venues. You can also do a Google search and uh, 
or look into Facebook groups. If searching for a venue is really overwhelming for you and you're just not sure or you're not finding anything, consider hiring a wedding planner. Also always ask to make sure that they don't have any beverage or catering minimums because some of them are like, we have a $24,000 catering minimum and you're like, I have 50 guests. There's no way we're going to eat $24,000 worth of food. After that, you'll wanna hire vendors. So you wanna start with your caterer, your photographer, your videographer, and then after that, you'll wanna look at your florist DJ and begin researching things like your wedding website, the stationery you wanna use, your coordinator. <laughs> if you haven't hired a wedding planner. So definitely look for wedding vendors beyond The Knot and Zola and Wedding Wire. P.S. The Knot and Wedding Wire are the same thing. It's the same business. I highly recommend doing a Google search instead for your area, especially for things like wedding planners and live wedding painters if you want one, um, photo booth rentals. A lot of people are not on the knot because it can cost ten to $20,000 per year. And if you are a wedding coordinator and you're doing $1,000 per event and you want to be able to still pay the bills, you're not going to be on the knot, but maybe you're an amazing coordinator. So I'm not on the knot, for example. I can only be found through like Instagram and Facebook. Believe me, for I'm a wedding planner and they were like, it's $300 a month. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> What? And that's the cheapest thing they have. They don't have free listings anymore. Definitely look elsewhere for your many of your vendors. The Knot is still really good for things like caterers and DJs though. After that, you'll want to design your wedding. You can grab inspiration from anywhere, like your venue, your personalities. Do you want to do a classic bohemian glam or vintage vibe? Do you want an enchanted forest feel? That's my specialty. Consider some color schemes and decor elements, stuff like that. Remember that Pinterest is great for getting ideas, but it's really bad for your mental health after a certain point because a lot of those are like 100k weddings. <laughs> Remember for wedding attire, wedding attire would be your next one. Get your wedding dress like 10 to 12 months in advance because it can take a long time for a dress to be made. Don't forget your shoes, alterations, and accessories. Maybe you want a signature scent for your wedding. It's usually between $300 and $900 for wedding dress alterations, depending on where you live. Invitations and RSVPs. Technically, you can do this all digitally, but if you want to go for full postal stuff, then um, save the dates, come out six months in advance. I recommend buying them both on Black Friday if you can, um, using different sites if possible, or just hiring a stationer if you have the money. Black Friday has some of the best detail, has some of the best deals. So if you get both your save the dates and your invitations, just hold on to your invitations until it's time to send them out. Don't forget to factor in stamps into your budget. Always include RSVP details and your wedding website link on your invitations. Invitations should go out about two to three months in advance for United States domestic weddings. But if you have international family and friends, you probably wanna send them out a bit further in advance, like four to five months in advance. Then you'll wanna plan your ceremony. Decide on the type of ceremony. So is it religious, secular, or fully personalized? Are you going for a druid or Wiccan wedding? Like, cool. Um, <laughs> I'm a heathen. <laughs> Choose readings, vows, and any rituals that you might like. It's very Canadian slash British Commonwealth thing to do, but you can sign your marriage license in front of everyone during the ceremony, but it's not typically common and done in the United States. But check out the Unboring Wedding Academy. It's super cool. I'll link it down below for anyone who's interested. Reception details. So that includes your, your speeches, what kind of traditions you're keeping or foregoing, uh, cake cutting, your song list. Are you gonna do an anniversary song or a money dance song? Are you gonna prohibit all lines? dances or Robin Thicke or what, whatever it is that you're going to do. Are you going to have honorary songs like your parents' first dance songs? Don't forget to enjoy your menu tasting. Always have consider that for your food and drinks. That would be your next thing. And then choosing those is, is kind of the next step. After that, you want to think about your decor and florals. So work with your florist to kind of create the design that you have in mind. So that includes designing on your centerpieces, table settings, lighting, all of that decor and the florals all really important. Your DJ can sometimes do some cool lighting stuff. Maybe you'll want to incorporate like glow sticks or, you know, those wristband glow sticks or the necklace glow sticks. Those are pretty cool. A lot of people love them. Then you'll want to choose a wedding cake or a dessert table or both. 
Remember that your florist can actually add flowers to your cake, but uh, definitely check between your florist and your baker because sometimes they might fight out who's actually allowed to touch the cake. Depends on the baker and the florist. With your photographer and videographer, like about, about one to two months before the wedding, you should have your shot list all set up and ready to go that you want uh, different poses or a different number of people. Make sure that your people know that, that you want them in those photos. They need to know that they are going to be in those photos, otherwise they will disappear. <laughs> Make sure they know. It is not obvious to a lot of people, believe it or not, not very good mind readers. Don't forget to arrange for transportation, and this could be for your guests or it could be your getaway car. If you get a getaway car, make sure that someone who is responsible is driving it. Depending on what state, your marriage license details are going to change, but definitely check your marriage license legal requirements. Um, like in the state of North Carolina, you can get it 60 days before your wedding. This is very different depending on where you live. So always check specifically in your area. And if you hire a professional officiant, they'll probably be able to give you some more guidance on this. If you're having a destination wedding, make sure to check your local laws and regulations surrounding it, both within the United States and wherever it is that you are planning to get married. Don't forget to include guest accommodations like a hotel block on your wedding website. That's another one. Favors and gifts. You can honestly forgo all of this, but if you choose to do wedding favors, consider mostly just gifts for your your wedding party and your parents, or just do something for each other, your spouses. Try to go for something edible that won't perish because a lot of favors are left behind. It's honestly one of the best ways to save money is just to forgo them entirely. You'll want to create a day of timeline about four weeks in advance once you have finalized your guest list and all of the details. Your wedding planner or wedding coordinator should do this for you if you have hired one. You'll want to buy event insurance once you also have that all solidified. Maybe you've already bought it, whatever, you know, just keep going. It's fine. In the weeks coming up to the event, make sure that you also create a final details list. Put your decor in tubs, especially Tupperware, like those big, big, nice big tubs. Uh, you can get them at thrift stores for like a dollar each and label everything if you can. That way your coordinator or whoever is helping you set up can actually just be like, oh, boom, 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 we can get it done. Um, it can be very hard and very challenging on your coordinator if you don't do this. It's not, we can do it, don't worry, but like, highly recommend. Don't forget that you can also think, if you have some extra wiggle room near the end, you can hire on a photo booth or pick out some DSLR cameras or the, the Kodak ones, those are really fun, and create a guest book that people might actually want to fill out. A lot of people forget the guest book. Don't forget to buy your card box also. If you found any of this helpful, then you might want to check out my free wedding planning timeline. It comes with tips on every page, linked in the description below. It also comes with a wedding party mini guide that you might find helpful if you're having a wedding party. By the way, you can mix the wedding party all together. It saves you and your friends money, I promise, if you're on a budget. And also saves you from drama, if that's a problem. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching some of my other content that is related to stuff like this. Or if you need a break, because I'm sure you need a break, drama stuff. It's a lot of fun. Don't forget to make that like button blush and say I do to that subscribe button to join the Sauter Otter family and swim with us, you know? We are the fastest growing otter family on the internet. Totally taken from Danny Gonzalez there. But keep it PG for me, okay?